Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 as the Aztecs in our tutorial series. So where we left off, we're in the process of building a bunch of builders so that we can use their production to make uh, infrastructure very efficiently. We have this scout over here. I'm just going to park him here. I'll probably forget about him. Um, and we're continuing to scout with our galleys. Let's pull back out of visual range and have these guys prepped and ready to go into combat. Just very gently move them forward. Okay, we finished the entertainment district in here. And now I want to build the Tlachli. I don't know how to say that properly, but I will assume that I'm saying it somewhat correctly. What tiles are you working in here? These seem like reasonable tiles. You're actually going to want to, grow to get the aqueduct for the extra housing and a granary for the extra housing. I'll finish the aqueduct really, really quickly. And we shall continue. Uh, builder has been completed over here. So let's go ahead and start work on the campus. Although... I put, could put an aqueduct here. Um, mm, campus data square. I don't know. Do I want to put the aqueduct there for the extra housing so that I can do more? No, that should be fine. We will just get to work on the amphitheater. We'll start building that now. Okay, I need him to come forward, so I might might try to get him to come at me. And I think this right here is going to be a district. This is going to be a district and this is going to be a district. So then I can fill in the rest of this area with farms and stuff. I think I'm going to do just a bunch of farms in and around here to uh, get this city to grow a bit. But I think these two tile improvements will keep me going for a while. Let's see. I could put another farm over here to get a nice farm quadrangle. Your delegation is always welcome. Oh, and if you're wondering why I place farms in a triangle, it's because normally farms give you plus one food. But if you place farms in a triangle and then pick up the um, feudalism technology, they get extra food. So each farm gets plus one food for every two adjacent farms. So if you place them in a triangle, each and every single farm has two farms adjacent to it. So they are plus two food. So this would normally be two food, one production. But because I have two farms adjacent to it, it's three food and one production, which allows the city to grow quite rapidly. We are, in fact, going to need a granary in here quite quickly <clears throat> uh, to help continue to grow. The city has plenty of room for growth. And we finished a district in here as well. Now, uh, I could grab the Oracle. Let's see, is there anything else that I would like to maybe grab? I could build the uh, Temple of Artemis if I build a camp here. And the Temple of Artemis would give me plus one amenity for every camp, pasture, and plantation. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be worth six amenities. So I think... I'm going to build that here, and then later on I can place like a um, a theater square on the deer. Because the only because I, I would happily lose this to be able to get a slightly better theater square. We're going to hold on to our envoys here, because we don't, we can't really get much value out of this. Although if I put one envoy into each of these guys, it would get me um, plus four production in my capital towards that wonder. So I think I will do that, because this is plus two production when producing wonders and buildings. And I don't plan on going to war with them again. So now we have plus four production, and that'll take a turn off of the Temple of Artemis. Switch over to the campus, insert some production, and then go back to the amphitheater. Okay, we can get a kill here, I think. Very good, and then this guy has a promotion. I should have attacked second with this guy so that the quadrireme would have to come closer. I'm going to back this guy up. 
I'm going to attack with this guy and then promote him. You're going to start running away to heal. I have a civic that I can choose right now. And I want to wake my way towards exploration. However, on the way, there might be some useful things. I've also unlocked a pretty important card here, which is the plus 100% campus adjacency. And so I'm going to plug that in. Even if I am losing um, production, the extra sides from here is pretty important. And I'll also be building more uh, campuses here in a bit. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I want to get to the Enlightenment. And I also want to get to Exploration. So I'm going to make my way to Mercenaries. Uh, medieval fairs and then exploration. Don't really have any viable locations for farms in here to get extra housing, which is why I built the aqueduct. It would also potentially give me more adjacency benefits. Um, now I can actually remove this improvement and then chop this deer to finish the Temple of Artemis quicker. And then we can place a district on this tile. It will lose us one amenity, but that's fine. We're going to place a farm here that'll give this city another housing as well as another really good food tile. Um, I think I'd like to work the food as a priority and get this city to just grow really rapidly. Um, up to its maximum population. Because it has a lot of potential growth room. It has a uh, it can grow four more populations, so we want to get that growing as fast as possible because the faster we get that population to grow, the more, uh, generally speaking, good things we can get from them. All right, let's convert this city. And we have one final missionary making his way to the north. And we will build this fishing boat. That'll make that into a pretty decent tile. In fact, I'm going to work it over this, even though it'll hurt the production because the food is pretty important to make sure this city grows in a reasonable time. We are... Actually, I think I'd like to get these chops done. I'd like to get these chops done so that I can um, work some other stuff. Okay, so now this guy is going to move in here to take the hit. This guy is going to take the Ambalon promotion, because I already have one with high movement speed. Then he should be able to kill this next turn when it comes forward. This guy will tank a hit, then you'll come forward and kill him. At least I think that's how it's going to go. In fact, I think it's safer if I do this so the second guy can't swing in here. Uh, we are going to harvest this for 90 production, which will finish the Temple of Artemis. You only need it. You only need the camp built to actually place the wonder. Once the wonder is placed, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have two build charges in here. And I think it would be a good time to go back here and grab irrigation after this so that we can finally put improve these. We've been kind of holding off improving these um, for a while because they were critical and they were still providing a lot of food. And you can see now this city is growing very rapidly. <clears throat> I could purchase these tiles to continue to extend the farming outwards. And you know what? I like that idea. It'll give me another chop as well. Now, this builder charge will be inserted into the harbor. Otherwise, you will go back to building the builder. We're going to chop here to finish the amphitheater. So you did your job. You tanked a hit. You're going to run away now. You're going to come in and finish off this quadrireme. And we'll bring our scout down this way. Let's choose our production here. We've got a builder. Are we in the process of building any districts? There is a theater square that we're building. Not quite ready for that. Now I want to get the work on a lighthouse. We have an amphitheater over here. Let's uh, purchase another tile. And let's chop out a builder who can then move there and then chop into the campus. We will use the overflow to get another builder. You're going to chop here to finish that a little bit quicker. I know I'm not doing super efficient chops by not moving Magnus around. It's not a big deal. Um, at this point, I've demonstrated how Magnus is used. Uh, probably the next best place to have him is over here in this place because there's a lot of uh, resource chopping that can happen over here. 
So let's move Magnus over to this new city. And we'll send you over here to get this city going. You uh, are going to insert more production into the harbor. And then we'll go back to building builders. The reason I'm building builders, again, is just because they're more uh, production efficient to build builders right now. Okay, so we're working a multitude of really good tiles. I'd like to get this improved with a mine so that I have another production tile when the city grows. You are going to spread here. The city almost has my religion. Probably one more spread will do the trick. When I saw the house of Artemis, the There's the Temple of Artemis. No, and there's apprenticeship. So multiple really important things have just happened. All of our mines now have plus one production. So you can see we're generating a lot more production from our mining resources. And we uh, got the Temple of Artemis. So this city just has like infinite um, uh, amenities, which means it's going to get a growth bonus. It means it's going to get a production bonus. Basically, everything it does is now better. And it has plenty of housing as well. So... Uh, I could continue to build builders, or I could continue to build infrastructure in here. And I think I want to get the granary so that the city can grow a little bit quicker, as well as have more housing. And this guy is going to insert production into the campus. And that will finish it. We'll get us plus three error score from this really nice campus. And I'd love to purchase a library in here to get it done nice and quick. Um, but we're probably going to have to hard build that. So we'll get started on the library as soon as possible because it's an important piece of infrastructure for our victory condition. This scout is heading down here. There's a couple of key texts that I'd like to pick up. One of them is irrigation. The other one is shipbuilding because I want to be able to embark now over to here to uh, figure out what's going on in this part of the world. I could attack here, but I'd likely die, so I'm just going to run away. You are going to insert the production into the theater square like so and then go back to building a lighthouse because the lighthouse will provide us with uh, really nice things now this city has reached its growth limit uh the maximum amount of population that i can hit i mean it could continue to grow but basically food is half as useful as it used to be so we're going to want to lock in tiles that give us things that are not food like this tile here it might be worth it to buy a mine to build a mine In fact, that's what I'm going to tell this builder to do so that we can lock in more of these productive tiles. And we just need to work one good food tile to keep us from uh, starving. Again, remember, food loses its value when you're one population away from your housing limit because all food is multiplied by a 50% penalty. It's in here somewhere. Uh, housing multiplier 0 0.5 so we're getting half of the food that we would normally do so food is worth a lot less right now in this city and we're going to continue to build farms over here we want the city to grow as fast as possible because it's very far underneath its housing limit you are going to insert more production into the harbor and then we're going to finish it in the next turn you're going to spread here. Okay, maybe one more spread should do it. We should be very close. I'm quite surprised we haven't already taken it over, but... So he's annoyed that my uh, navy is weak. That's fine. Oh, I should get, renew my friendship with Gilgamesh. Awesome, so we got more era score. Probably was a bit of a waste to build that right now, since we're just about to hit a new era. It's not the end of the world, though. If I was playing much more optimally, I would have delayed this uh, a little bit. And now we're going to build the Colosseum because the Colosseum provides a lot of value. The Colosseum uh, gives you plus two culture and plus two amenities to all your cities within six tiles, which means these four cities and eventually Buenos Aires as well when I conquer it. I do plan on conquering this at some point because it has access to pretty decent land and it'll be very useful for me to own that. Looks like we got ourselves a great general. We're just going to put him to sleep. We don't need him for anything. And we can teleport him to where we need him if we need him. We are going to um, 
leave this city the way it is for now and just start on a lighthouse because we want our trade routes now. We want a couple of trade routes to be able to uh, move production and food around. Eventually, when we run out of chops, we're going to give Magnus the surplus logistics and park him in Tenochtitlan. Plus two production. We'll work that. City still has good growth. That's nice. You are going to improve this mine right over here. You are coming back to heal. You're coming back to heal. It looks like there's some... I might need another unit. Maybe I could get a quadrarium really quick in one of these cities. I must spread here. Okay, finally we converted it. Again, more error score that I don't need uh, right now. So again, that's probably like eight error score I could have gotten in the next era and been just fine. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> it's not the end of the world that we did that. I just, you know, I'm lazy and I just wanted to get it done now. But if I was playing more optimally, I would definitely have saved that error score. Uh, right, so the granary has been completed in here. Now we are going to pick up the stable. And the reason why we're picking up the stable is because the stable lines up just better with our growth. If we take five turns to build a stable, it'll take five turns to grow, and then we can plop down a new district pretty much immediately. And it'll almost certainly be a scientific uh, district like a campus or something. Uh, so let's have a look at what this city is working on. So I definitely want to put a mine on that iron, because I could potentially sell that to other AI. Um, and we're just going to start work on another builder, so that we can invest into more districts. You're going to heal up there. You're coming back. Spend one turn healing here, and then you're going to run up to this city, like there. You're going to go there. Heal. Heal. We now have access to the mercenaries card, so if we need to upgrade our units, we can do so. We're going to make a dedication here. It looks like Sumeria got another golden age, which is uh, annoying. And this time, we're going to go for monumentality so that we can continue to produce builders for a low cost, uh, mainly faith. This is a really, really powerful thing because it allows you to... I've already conquered this... Uh, the landmass in terms of science, right? S or in terms of religion. All, all of the cities on this uh, continent have my religion. So now I want to use my faith for something else, and I can use that to produce builders for a relatively low cost of 120 faith each. That does increase by about 5 faith each time you do it, but it's still cost effective. And I purchased it in the city with Liang so that I got an extra build charge so that for 120 faith, I'm getting roughly... Uh, seven build charges, which if we look at the price of a district right now, uh, that's 240 production, so they do 20%. That's 40 production, so I spent 120 faith to get like 280 production worth of builder charges in terms of if I were to spend them all on districts. We are hard building the Colosseum in here. Um, but we could build it much quicker if we switched over here to a little bit of food. I'm going to spend one more turn growing in here, I think. Just to get to the 7 pop, and then I'll work more growth, or more production. We are going to build a mine here. And we'll go to the next turn. This city is going to need a way to get extra food somehow, so it's almost certainly going to need a trade route. We now have the ability to build quadrariums. We are going to uh, sort of plot out our next moves on the tech tree. So we need to get to uh, universities for sure so that we can get more science. So that's going to be our next thing. Let's check on the great scientists. We are currently in the lead for great works. Okay. We'll improve this mine as well. These are great mine tiles. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine for me for now. And the really nice thing is now my builders have extra movement so they can move around the map a little bit easier. We are going to do what here? I think we're going to chop out that builder. And then use that 
to build... Oh, I never built my government plaza. Damn it. Right here is where I want to put it, I think. Um, yeah, damn. I completely forgot about my government plaza. This is actually critical. In fact, I should have built this a long time ago. Partially the problem is my capital hasn't built up the population for it, and that's where I want to build it, because it was building a bunch of settlers, which is probably an argument for me to have taken the provision um, promotion with Magnus and left him in my capital. But Magnus was kind of busy doing other things. Um, but we'll get the government plaza relatively quickly and make short work of that. Right, <clears throat> we have a builder, and now we want to start building something that will help us out. Uh, and I think the extra trade route is going to be very important to help the city grow, so we're going to immediately work on this, and uh, in the meantime, work on the granary. We're going to put a mine here that will give this city an extra production tile. Very nice, so it can continue to produce. We have an extra builder in here. And we're going to position him over in the capital for when we are building the government plaza district right here. All right, Scout, you can now embark. You're going to go park over here, wait for these guys to be healed up, and to escort you to the uh, other continent that we can explore. All right. I think I'm going to shop here to finish this lighthouse and then use the overflow to finish a trader because I need the traders as soon as possible. I could also just straight up purchase a trader, which I think is a worthwhile investment actually. I could also go for things like the mausoleum, the great lighthouse, etc, etc, but that's not going to be representative of a higher difficulty game, so we're just going to focus on the things that are actually going to help us. And stuff like extra amenities and culture, those are all very useful, whereas stuff like the extra trade route could be really, really good actually. And so could the mausoleum. But I think... Ah, oh man, I wish I'd put the theater square here. Because if I put the colossus right here, that could be interesting. Uh, the city has an extra housing now, so it is worth it to work a little bit of food to grow. I think this is a good spread of food and production. So I'm happy with that. We don't want to overgrow. And you're just going to park there waiting for the next district you are going to switch to commercial hub we'll chop here then we'll switch back to granary and you're going to chop out the granary so the city can grow a little bit quicker and we're also going to get the water mill as a priority we're working all these great hill tiles and then next we're going to want to start putting farms in here so we'll probably get another builder uh either in here or we'll purchase one in the liang city and then preemptively send him over here to start. Just put a quadrangle of farms in here so the city has a good spread of food and production. Unit needs orders. We are going to harvest the rainforest. You are going to move out. We are going to place a harbor first. Um, because we want that done. But we also want the granary. And I chopped the jungle on this tile. We are going to place this now for the extra amenity. We are then going to harvest out the granary. Then we are going to place our next district, which will be a commercial hub. I want the city to generate a lot of gold for me so that this is a gold generation city, basically. Um, that's its entire job, is to just generate gold for me and get a high population so that it can be used with Reyna, who will be the next governor that we get. Although Pingala would be quite good to just stick in the capital, actually. So I'm going to put one point into Pingala. Probably should have done this a long time ago. These are small little mistakes that I'm making. Uh, and I'll get 15% culture and science in my capital, which is currently my best culture and science city, even considering... Yeah, it looks like I'm getting the most value out of having him there. We finished the library in here. Uh, let's quickly grab the monument. I could put an aqueduct here. I don't think it's worth it. We just want... We do want more housing, though. You know what? I'm going to put the aqueduct here. I've made the decision. I'm going to put the aqueduct here and then just have a, a triangle of farms, and that'll be fine. Uh, this trade route really needs to get over to this city because it has plenty of housing potential, but it needs to grow. 
Uh, I think an industrial zone would fit quite nicely here. And the reason we're building industrial zones is because we're going for a scientific victory, we are going to want great engineer points great, and great scientist points as our primary points. Great merchant points are secondary as and tertiary are great, great general and great admirals. These are also quite nice just for getting more culture and stuff <clears throat> and being able to sell them to the AI for more value. Right. Um, you're going to go improve this. We're going to switch to the theater square. We'll insert a chop into it, then switch back to the Coloss Colossus. You are going to switch to the commercial hub, and then we'll insert production in here. This just allows us to build multiple things and use our builders efficiently. Let's have a look. What tile are you working now? You're working this tile. I think I would like to work the jade because it has culture, which will allow the borders in here to grow, which will give me access to more chops. And then we're going to uh, build the mine. Now, it could be argued that waiting for Magnus to be done being used over here and then moving him around. But I don't think that's worth it. Um, I think the production now is gonna get this city kicked off, especially since it's a Tundra city, it's gonna to need to get as much power as possible, as quickly as possible for it to ever be useful. And we're going to trade internally with our capital. The secondary ben benefit of this is a nice road across our Southern uh, part of our empire. And the food and production in here will help the city develop into something useful because it is settled on Tundra. All right, remember, we're going to immediately begin the government plaza and immediately chop into it to save a turn. Remember, even though the city has a really high production, um, the government plaza is 113 production. So that means that chop is worth 38 production, which is about on par to what we want to be spending on a builder chop at this point in the game. This trade route, I'm trying to think what city is going to need the most help. Let's have a look. How are you doing? You're up to seven population, so food isn't actually super important for you. In fact, you can see that the city knows that the food isn't super important because it's actually working a campus district. Um, Tile, you're going to need help. I think this city is going to need, I think this city right here is going to need the most help. So I'm going to move my trader over there and then use it. Additionally, I, I could use a road over here too just to be able to move my guys around more efficiently. And then you're going to, with the assistance of this guy, throw down a couple of farms. This will give the city more population room, but more importantly, it'll give it um, growth tiles that I'll be able to work these specialist lots with. <clears throat> We're gonna swap here to the theater square and then we will insert production into it again. Then we'll switch back to the Colossus. I'm not really worried about getting the Colossus. It would just be a nice thing to get an extra um, trade route. Okay, we're going to move here. You're going to insert production into this. We're going to get to work on the harbor. You are going to harvest to finish the harbor. Oh, no, I meant to harvest for a builder. Okay, that was a mistake. I meant to chop out a builder here. Uh, small mistakes, not the end of the world. These guys are now ready to escort the scout. I think they're healthy enough. You can go there. Then this builder, we are going to insert production into the commercial hub once again. I'd like to click on the builder. That'll almost be done, and soon we'll be finished with the water mill. I'm going to hold on to my gold now for a little bit, um, and think about what I want to spend it on. I think gold is something that, it kind of burns a hole in your pocket, because remember, gold in your inventory loses its value over time, so you want to spend it as fast as you can on things that are important. So now we have really great growth tiles in here and all that sort of jazz. We are going to use this six charge builder to reinforce this city up here and get it growing nice and quickly. We're going to swap to the theater square, invest, that'll finish it, and we'll get to work on the Colossus. We're going to trade with the capital because, again, the capital is about to build a government plaza, which will mean it's a very viable target to trade with. Um, I didn't really explain how internal trade works, but let me do that right now. So basically, um, how internal trade routes work is uh, you get a baseline of plus one food and plus one gold uh, for trading with one of your cities. And then for every district that your city has built, you will get an extra yield. So, for example, if you build a holy site, you'll get plus one food from trading to this city. If you build a campus, plus one food. Encampment, plus two, plus one production. Harbor, plus one production. Commercial hub, plus one production. Entertainment complex, 
plus one food, I think. Um, theater Square, plus one food. Industrial Zone, plus one production. And you can check all of this in here if you go into the districts section of the thing. Sorry, uh, this section up here. And you can look at like the campus here. You can see down here, domestic destination plus one food. The commercial hub, domestic destination plus one production. So that's a way that you can kind of discern how, how you're going to benefit. And one thing sometimes I like to do is to pick a particular city and build all the districts that have the plus production yields on them and then use that as like the place I send my trade routes to. For example, this city over here could be a candidate of that. If I built a harbor, a commercial hub, a encampment and an industrial zone, then this city would be worth like plus four production to trade with, which would be just basically like working another mine tile in another city, which is pretty valuable. Uh, right, alongside the owner benefits you can get from trade routes from policy cards. <clears throat> so I actually want to get this harbor done as fast as possible. So we're going to chop and build it as f like so. You, on the other hand, we're going to chop into this again. We just want to get this done as fast as possible because we've already delayed it a lot. And delaying it is not good. You're going to jump in the water now. And one of the really cool things that a lot of people don't know about is that actually units in formation on the water will actually provide combat bonuses to each other. So having a boat near an embarked scout, they'll give each other a combat bonus of plus two uh, for the um, flanking and support benefits. It's quite, it's quite useful. Right, let's insert more production into the commercial hub. Boom. There we go. We finished the commercial hub. Now we want to immediately get to work on the market. We want another trade route. So we're going to purchase ourselves another tile that we can chop. And that'll get us closer to finishing the market. Remember, we're chopping all this land because we need the city to just be useful now. If we sit around, the city is never going to be useful. So we just needed to get, get it to do things immediately. Um, okay, so I have a few choices here with regards to which uh, government plaza building I want to go for. Typically, I would go for this much earlier in the game, but I kind of delayed it because of just the fact that we had a lot of stuff that we were doing in the early game. Uh, I think I'm going to go for audience chamber here. Uh, the choices here are pretty straightforward. Um, you go for ancestral hall if you rush your government plaza and you have a lot of land and you want to do mass settling. You go for the audience chamber if you don't have a huge amount of land and you've already settled the majority of your cities. And you go for warlord's throne if you have any um, desires to go to war with people. <clears throat> In this case, we've already settled the majority of our cities, so we're going to go ahead and grab Audience Chamber because it'll give us plus four housing in cities with governors and an extra amenity. So that's always very nice. Um, right. We don't need another governor point just yet. I could get to work on Researcher and Grants, uh, but we don't need that just at the moment. I don't think I need any of Liang's stuff either. Although it could be good to grab that and park her in the capital and put Pingala over here. In fact, I might do that. It's kind of sad that this is going to be an industrial zone because it would be a great theater square too. Because it's right beside here. But I think I have enough theater squares to sustain my culture right now. And plus I have plenty of other cultural benefits that are making it so that I'm less worried about that aspect of my empire. Okay, we want to get this done for the gold and the trade route. Um, this builder is in position to build another mine. We want lots of production in this city if we can. And we'll just lock these in. <clears throat> We're also going to want to start putting trade routes in our capital to help grow it into a really big population so that it can do uh, useful things. We also have a tribal hood over here, which is what the scout is for, to pick up all these nice little things. Right. The city has a food problem, which is why we have a trade route. Um, it doesn't need any more improved tiles, so I'm just going to park you there. And have both these guys just kind of park around. I might harvest this just for the gold. Just to get the gold immediately. That I can use it to buy a trade route when I finish... Uh, one of these trader buildings. So I think I have enough harbors um, 
But again, harbors are just so good for coastal cities, so it's kind of hard not to build them immediately uh, in coastal cities. And now you're going to go chop out a builder. You are going to continue to improve mines. You're scouting for my scout who will try to capture this. You're in position. We'll go to the next turn. Unit needs orders. We will invest into the harbor again while building the granary. You're going to come up here. We're going to switch to a builder. You're going to drop a plantation there. Then we'll finish the harbor. You go there. You guys can just hang on. You're waiting until this is finished. Lots of mines. We want lots and lots of production in here. Because this is where we're going to do our spaceport projects and stuff like that. So we just finished Medieval Fairs. There's nothing particularly useful in here that we need to worry about. These are not amazing. They're okay for aesthetics and uh, Merchant Confederation if you're going for some sort of city-state city game where you uh, focus on getting suzerainty. We're not doing any of that. We also don't need the Governor title, so we're just going to skip over that. We are going to switch to the harbor, insert production into the harbor, and then switch back to finishing the granary. We are going to start to produce a builder over here. We'll put down another mine for this city. That mine, I think, is actually better than these other ones. Let's see, if I just unlock some of these tiles, what does the city think is a good move? It has a good growth tile over here. So I think I accept the city's um, current layout. We're just making sure that we're focusing on having plenty of production and a decent amount of food. You can see 32 production here is quite good. So it should build things relatively quickly. We got a little bit of gold out of that. Looks like there's more luxuries over here that we could take advantage of. So we're probably not entirely done settling. We could maybe settle over here, depending on loyalty and what sort of things are over here. Getting an extra luxury, especially as the Aztecs, is quite valuable. So we might look into pop plopping a settler down there later on in the game. This is almost certainly going to be an industrial zone. And we can start spending our well-earned gold on things. Okay, I've already done that here, right. Um, let's go ahead and purchase another tile. Right there. And we'll chop next turn to get the city to grow and produce. All right, we just finished university tech, which means we're going to want to build that everywhere that we have it. We can't do that here. But thankfully, we can do it over here and get the plus four science from the university. It'll take a little bit of while to build, but that's not a big deal. So now that we have education, we need to make a decision about how we get to um, chemistry, rocketry, and then all these other techs. And really, it's just going to be about building infrastructure and efficiently making our way through the tech tree and getting as many boosts as possible. So, for example, we want to get the boost to gunpowder. So that means we're going to want to pick up military engineering so that we can build an armory. We're also going to want to get the guild civic. We're going to want to build two universities. We would like to own, we want to own two crossbowmen, so we might build archers here before we get machinery, etc, etc, etc. So we need to start thinking about how we chain, uh, how do we get more science to get to the end of the tech tree, right? And that's what the entire next episode is going to be about, how to optimize your way up through the... Um, the tech tree with regards to getting a scientific victory but that's going to be it from me i want to thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys are enjoying this series and i hope it's being helpful and teaching you stuff about the game please remember to subscribe if you want to see more from me remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel and remember to leave a comment if you have any questions or you want to give me any of your feedback other than that i want to say i love you all very very much and i'll see you next time <laughs>